Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to set up your Xerox Ultralink copier to scan to a shared folder on your computer. Uh, basically it's called scan to an SMB folder. I'm going to go ahead and run through all the steps on how to do that and if you're still having issues uh, getting it to work then most likely it's something in your computer that's preventing the communication from working. So at the end of the video, I'm going to have you check a few things on your computer. Hopefully that would fix it. If not, then you need to contact uh, further support, some IT company or so. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is create a new user on your computer uh, with a password. There's several ways to do it. You can go into control panels and users and follow all the steps to create a new user. I find the easiest way to do it is to type in here in the search box, N-E-T-P-L-W-I-Z. Uh, if you want to know what that stands for, is Network Places Wizard. So you click on that, and then you click on Add. You then uh, select Sign In Without a Microsoft Account. Click on Local Accounts. Give the new user any name you want. I'm going to call it Xerox, so you know I know who it is. If I ever run into it later and I forget who's the user. Uh, password, you can do anything you want. I'm going to keep it simple. One, two, three, four, five, six. Confirm the password. And the hint, I'm just going to put one, two, six. Now you're going to hit next and you're done. So click on finish. Next step is we're going to create a new folder on the C drive. I'm going to go ahead and open up my C drive. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to create a new folder, call it what you want, but keep it simple. Keep it something in reference to the scan so you know what it is. So I'm going to call mine scans. Now we need to share that folder. So we're going to right click. We're going to go to properties. Oops, let me do this again. Right click, go to properties. There you go. So we're going to click on sharing. We're going to go down to advanced sharing. We're going to click on share this folder, click on permissions, and we're going to add the new user. That's a user we just created. So you're going to type in Xerox, check name, make sure it finds it. There you go. Click OK. Now you got to make sure that this name's got all these check marks. If you put a check mark on the top, it automatically puts it on the second one. It needs full control, change, and read permission. So you definitely need to do that. Without this, it's not going to work. So hit apply, OK, and apply again, and OK. Next step, you're going to click on securities, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to click on edit, add, and you're going to type in Xerox once again, check name, hit OK. Now, this has to have full permission as well. So you're going to click on the first one, make sure that all of them are checked off, Click apply, okay. And then I, I what I like to do is I like going back to the sharing section. I like to click on this box here and just make sure that Xerox got the read and write. If it doesn't, you want to click on the down arrow and make sure it's read and write. If it's already there, you can just hit cancel and hit close. Now let's go ahead and close that. Next step is we need to get into the back end of the copier. Uh, and what I mean by that is we need to access the network interface through our web browser. So you need to know the IP address of the copier. Now, if you did not assign your copier an IP address and you, you're jumping ahead, you should pause this video and you need to assign your copier an IP address and make sure it's on your network. Otherwise, none of this is going to work for you. Uh, I do have a link on our description to show you how to assign an IP address to your copier. So look for that. Click on it if you need help. Uh, so let's move forward. I, I already know the IP address of my copier, which is 192.168.0.20. So that opens up the back end. This is a Xerox Alta link. You pretty much control everything through here. So we're going to log in. I'm already logged in, so I'm going to log out just so you see how it looks. So you're going to click on log in. Username is going to be lowercase admin. Password is 1111. Now, if this doesn't work, I hate to tell you guys, but you're going to need to contact an authorized Xerox uh, center to come out um, and reset that for you. It's not something you can do on these newer machines. You need to get, uh, you need to go through an authorized Xerox uh, dealer. So let's move on. I like to counter properties and make sure all my scanning features are turned on. So you want to come here, click on connectivity, click on setup, scroll down, make sure that your SMB filing here is enabled um, 
you can go in here and make sure that all of this looks good. Now, most likely yours is going to show the check mark uh, without the SMB1. I like to put it there for those of you using old computers, still using SMB1, even though it says not recommended. Um, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you uh, how to make sure that your SMB2 and 3 are turned on just to prevent any issues. But for this uh, demonstration, I'm going to leave it on. I, I don't think it's a big deal, but um, it's up to you. It's up to your security um, preferences in your companies. And um, let's move forward. So you're going to click Save. Mine's going to say no changes uh, to apply because it was already there, but yours is going to say different. So click OK. Uh, now we're going to go to address book. Okay, so I already have one created. I'm going to go ahead and delete this so I can create a new one. So you're going to see this when you when you go to create your first contact. So we're going to click on manually add a contact uh, name. You can give it whatever name. Um, I'm just going to put my initials. Company, you can put your company name if you want. I'm going to leave this blank. Display name is what you wanted to read on the copy when you walk up there. So uh, you can put reception desk, you can put front desk, uh, or someone's desk, someone's computer name, whatever you want. I'm going to use, again, my initials, which is my computer. And we're going to click on Add Destination. And the nickname, you want, uh, you're going to see, uh, when you walk up to the copy, you're going to see MV, and then you're going to see the description underneath. I'm going to call it Scans, which is the same name of the folder. It's up to you if you want to call it my scans or whatever. It's no big deal. It's just a nickname. Now, this is very important here, guys. Even though I, I know it says IPv4 and host name, it gives you an option. I'll tell you one thing. I found many situations where the host name just gives me issues. I can't explain why. I haven't figured it out. I think it might be something to do with the firmware and the updates with Windows. I'm not sure. But I'll, if I were you, I'd play it safe and just put the IP address of the computer. You have to put the computer's information here. Uh, so you can try the host name, see if it works. It might work on Windows uh, Professional, but I know on the Home Edition, which I'm using here, unfortunately, it, it gives me issues. So I'm going to use the IP address of the computer. There are several ways to find the IP address for your computer. I find the easiest way is to come here, type in CMD, to get into the command prompt, and type in IP config, and hit enter. And there you have it. There's the IP address of your computer. Okay, so you're going to type that in here. That's the IP address of your computer. Now share, you're going to put the folder name. Do you remember we called it scans? That's the name of the folder. Login is going to be your new user, which is Xerox. Password is going to be that password we, we created, which I, my password is 123456. I'm going to type that in again. Now I like to click on destination test just to make sure everything, I got everything uh, set properly. Once again, it's going to ask you for your password and click start test. Now you definitely want to make sure all these are checked off. Okay. Uh, sometimes you're going to get this one that shows not applicable. That's fine. Uh, but as long as you don't get anything right here, you're good. So cl click closed and click saved. And there you have it. So, oh, one thing I want you to do is I, let's go back in here real quick. Go to edit, and you want to put a check mark here. So you're in global favorites, and I'll show you why. When you walk up to the copier, it's going to be showing you right there the favorites. So uh, that's it. So let's walk over to the copier, and I'll show you how to do your first scan. Okay, so let's walk up to the Xerox copier. I got mine right here. Okay, so when you're at the home screen, I'm going to go ahead and lower this so there's no reflection. There he goes. So when you're at the home screen, you're going to look for a folder that says Scan 2. You're going to click on Add Destination, and there you're going to either select Favorites or Add This Book. That's the check mark I had you do at the end. So we're going to select Favorites. Here's the name of the, fo uh, of the folder I created. Remember, MV and then Scans. That's the name and the nickname. So I'm going to select that. And now that that's here, I'm just going to hit scan. I already have something on the glass. Uh, so you can use the document feeder face up or on the glass, whatever works for you. And just hit scan. Now, this is the message you want. You want it to say complete. That's a good sign when it does that. If it doesn't, it's going to print out an error report. I went ahead and um, well, I thought I had an error report. But you'll get one if it doesn't go through. So now let's go back to the computer and retrieve that scan. Okay, guys, we're back 
to the computer. Now let me go ahead and open up my scan folder on my C drive. Here it is. So when you click on that, you will see the document you just scanned right there, okay? So uh, what I do recommend is for you to go in and click on, right click on scan on the folder you created and create a shortcut. You wanna go ahead and create that. Do you want a shortcut placed on your desktop? You wanna say yes. So click on that and uh, it will be on your desktop and there you go, you now configured your copier to scan to your computer. Now, I mentioned to you, I'm gonna show you a few things you need to do. Uh, first off, you need to make sure all your sharing features are turned on. Uh, there's several ways to do that. Uh, you can go into control panel, which is right there. You can go, let me wait for that open, network and internet, click on that. Network and sharing center, you wanna click on that. And go to a change advanced sharing settings. You want to make sure that all these are set to network discovery. Make sure this is all on. File and print sharing. Click on the next one. Arrow down. Make sure this is on. This is on. And lastly, you want to do the same thing with this one. Make sure this one's on. And you can keep this on or off. It doesn't matter. I keep mine off. So uh, that's one thing you need to do. The next thing is very, very important. Windows uh, updates tend to turn off your SMB settings. And this is a lifesaver right here. So follow through. You want to go on... You want to type in turn windows features on and off you want to click on that and you want to make sure that your smbs are all turned on so scroll down till you get to smb most likely these are not going to be on your computer you want to make sure you check them all hit ok and you have to reboot your computer don't forget you have to reboot your computer or it's not going to take place so most likely those two uh sections i showed you there will fix your scanning issues so good luck guys and i hope you get everything running Thank you.